major problem confronting Nigeria is the lack of stable power supply with challenges in generation, distribution and maintenance of existing power infrastructure. Following the decentralization of the power sector by the president last year, Ondo State was granted regulatory oversight on the electricity market within its territory. What does this new dispensation hold for improved power generation, supply and other ancillary matters in Ondo State? These will be our focus on this week's edition of The Tracker. My name is Joy Pius. Welcome to the program. Reliable access to electric power needed for several homes and businesses remains a great obstacle facing Nigeria. The socio-economic well-being of Nigeria is being threatened by the formidable challenges in the power sector. Manufacturing industries are folding up, while others are relocating their production plants to more friendly climes because of the high cost of doing business. Nigeria's power crisis is hydro-headed, requiring some sober reflection on how to rescue it and rekindle its potential to drive the country's industrial capabilities. Without improving power generation, the strive by any administration to transform the economy may be unattainable. It is estimated that Nigeria needs about 60,000 megawatts of electricity to attain stability. But the country has a problem distributing the mega 7,000 megawatts it currently generates, struggling to distribute a paltry 4,000 megawatts with its old and antiquated power infrastructures. Different power sector reforms of successive administration have hardly provided the needed relief. Power supply has been a very big major concern to every right-thinking person in Ondo State over the years. In fact, it has been very, very epileptic. Even where we have a semblance of supply of electricity, it has been in form of fit and starts. Today you have it, the next minute it is gone. So we are here to get there. In fact, we are, we are just starting. Power, uh, electricity supply is power. It has to do with the economy, the well-being of the people, how the how they say will flourish depend on the availability of power supply. Problems with infrastructures like bad transformers, bad electricity poles, estimated bills, those are issues relating to distribution. If you generate enough and you have poor infrastructures, it will not get to the, to the consumer. So government should look inward. I do not expect us in the 21st century to have problem with having a meter. In advanced economies, these meters are things that you can go to any shop and you go and buy. You go to any electronic shop, you go and buy. It's like a phone. Buy it, install it. You just regulate. Citizens have taken up the responsibility of becoming government in their spaces. Citizens when you go to new communities, citizens are the ones that are responsible for infrastructures like electric poles, infrastructure like cables. They are the ones that we facilitate how the people we call NEPA, you know, we come and do what they are supposed to do for the people. Even when it is a business firm, a business organization, that they earn from what people are using, you know. So Nigerian citizens have been so proactive, they have been so encouraging that they are doing these things for, their, for, for themselves. In June 2023, President Bola Tinubu assented to the Electricity Act 2023, which was initially passed by lawmakers in July 2022. 
the Electricity Act consolidated all legislations that handle the electricity supply industry to provide an inclusive and ideal institutional framework to control the post-privatization phase of the Nigerian electricity supply industry and encourage private sector investments in the industry. Nigeria's constitution, as amended, provides for shared powers between the federal and state governments in terms of making laws for electricity. But this is not a practice on account of the Electricity Reform Act, which empowers NERC to carry out regulations across the country. States like Lagos, Enugu, Kaduna, Ondo, among others, can begin to regulate their own electricity markets as they have already created enabling laws. This state happens to be one of the three or four states in the country that had their own electric, electric power sector law. Our own was assented by our governor in December 2020. Uh, what the law has done is to enable us for that. Before, even though electricity was on the concurrent list, but it, has the, it gave us the ram, but it kept the rain in its hand. It, it said anywhere covered by the national grid that the state government could not have control over. But what the law has done now is the state governments now have the power to do everything from generation to transmission to distribution, they can do all of those. We received very strong support from the governor and some members of the, on the, of the House of Assembly. At the end of the day, we were able to forge a consensus and have the law in place. It is that law that created the first state-owned electricity regulatory agency in the history of Nigeria. That is the Ondo State Electricity Regulatory Bureau. Now, with that organization in place, of course, there are some other agencies created by that law, including one whose sole purpose is to help the state commercialize electricity so that the state could take advantage of the immense opportunities available in that sector. That is the Ondo State Power Company. However, the regulatory agency has a mandate to take charge of every electricity regulatory issue in areas outside the national grid. However, we knew that we had substantial issues in areas within the grid. That that then constitution prevent, constitutional provision prevented us from being able to get, get involved in. As a workaround, we again leveraged the consumer protection law to give power to that regulatory bureau so that it will be able to protect the interests of the ordinary people, the interests of the masses. The governor loved it. My colleagues in cabinet at the time loved it. The attorney general supported us and were eventually able to get the House of Assembly to forge a consensus with us and that law was passed and that body was created. In April this year, Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission delegated oversight powers to Enugu, Ikiti, and Ondo states, raising questions about the potential impact on operations. Will these states merely regulate existing underperforming firms, or can they enact meaningful changes? The feasibility of state governments generating, transmitting, and distributing electricity remains a subject of debate. While some doubt their financial capacities, others consider whether they will explore renewable energy opportunities or solely focus on leveraging existing power infrastructure for revenue. With NERC's recent decision to cede regulatory power to state bodies such as the Undo State Electricity Regulatory Bureau. The landscape of the Nigerian electricity supply industry has shifted after 19 years of NERC's monopoly. How important is the regulatory oversight vested in the state by the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission? You know, to generate power is not a, before, it's a very assiduous task that you have to go 
and acquire your land. You have to go and conduct environmental and social impact assessment. You will, and this environmental and social impact assessment alone can take you one or two years. Because you are going to take the wet season, you are going to take the dry season. So if they must do a thorough job, setting up a power plant, you will spend no less than a minimum of three to four years before you can commence. But now it's not going to be so. Because the regulatory power is already residing in the, uh, in the regulatory bureau of the state. So it's a lot of advantage to us at this moment that there is going to be improved power supply. Yeah, and you know when the network is too long, it, you know it's a lot of problem. So considering that power on the state now, will make our networks to be short, 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 short. And once they are short, the, the shorter it is, the better for, you know, for supply. In all, we have about 3,400 in terms of actual daily generation that is wheeled across the nation. If you look at our state, Ondo State, Ondo State has capacity to take maybe roughly 300 and something there about of this, which is the equivalent of 9% of the total nameplate, uh, the total generation capacity, not nameplate. We have in excess of 12,000 megawatts of electricity if we are talking about the nameplate values. But for you to appreciate the difficulty we have as a nation, we are now in excess of 200 million people. 200 million people. And for 200 million people, the effective power will that cross you know, from generation end, is just about 3,400 megawatts. Now, if we continue this way, it simply means that in the next 1,000 years, we may not be able to get a fix to the power sector. How? Because we have taken more than we can chew as, a, as, as an upcoming growing nation that is new to complicated development. What the current decentralization effort is aiming at is to ensure that as many among the people will be able to access electricity and not only through the structure provided by the managers of the national grid, you know, they are the ones that brought in BDC and co, but by alternative power service providers and discos that will also be licensed by the same bureau. That same bureau which I expect to also, you know, be upgraded to a commission you know, in those states, will be providing the licenses to additional competitors in the sector. And that's how you get the sector to be more efficient when there is an opportunity for competition. There are diverse challenges bedeviling on those states. Chief among them is the blackouts in some parts of the state, the impunity of service providers regarding estimated billings, lack of proactiveness in the maintenance of power infrastructure, among others. One key question on the lips of the Undo State residents is, will these milestone achieved by the state put a stop to these problems? Uh, the issue of estimated billing is a very serious uh, criminal offense to, to bill people by estimation. In fact, the laws of our state Ondo here is very much against it and uh, there is an attempt by us now to set up what we call the Special Offenses Court whereby anybody who does not get meter into his apartment, into his building will be sanctioned. We are going to set up Special Offenses Court for people who steal energy. Of course, you know that the uh, people's attitude towards public property in Nigeria is not always uh, at the best. Um, but we now that the power is on the state, the state is now left for the state to move out and ensure that they begin to uh, they begin to regulate the activities of people, handling of the uh, electrical infrastructures within uh, the respective domain. One of the problems we are having is that 
the power generation, the power supply we are getting from BDC is about 11 kilowatt. I mean, uh, 11 uh, megawatts per day. 11 megawatts. And when you multiply by the total number of hours, even the one they call band A that is supposed to have life on average of 20 hours does not have 10 hours per day. So we have 11 megawatts. And what is expected for us to, the equipment that has been installed can accommodate 166 megawatts in Ondo State here. But what we are getting is 11 megawatts. Tell me where 11 megawatts will get to. It will do nothing. Our quota that BEDC is giving to us is 28 megawatts. Out of the 28 megawatts, 11 is coming. Out of the 11 megawatts, they will set aside 3 megawatts and call it commercial line. So all these activities are going to be regulated by the state very soon. The stage is set, so to speak, for a state like Gondo to begin to you know, generate, distribute, and transmit power. As I, the, last, as the last time I checked, I know that the independent power plant of Ondo State is at about 80% uh, completion. One is at Alagbaka, they're very close to Royal Bed. You will see a place behind that Alagbaka Primary School. That is the designated point for that. And I've heard the Commissioner for Mines and Power of Ondo State who had uh, said at different fora that efforts have been made to ensure that Ondo State has power supply and also ensure that people get it and it's affordable. So I think we must understand that uh, when government is making effort to alleviate the poverty and also to ensure that people are getting better livelihood, we must also commend them. We must also know that it is not the day a woman gets pregnant that will so deliver. There is a gestation period. While many citizens are apprehensive about whether the decentralization of the regulatory framework in the country will provide the needed transformation in the sector, there are high expectations about the Undo State Electricity Regulatory Bureau Law 2022, which was passed to position Undo State in the path of self-regulation. How sophisticated and holistic is this legislation? Are there hopes it will in fact change the status quo? It is one thing for you to have a law, it is another thing for you to have the practical approach and implementation of that law. The both step is that law has been made. The other part is for Nigerians, or let me say on those people, to now see how they are going to maximally utilize the law. And I want to say I will charge the state government to ensure that the right people are constituted into that particular bureau. Then also all other agencies and bodies that are supposed to work with that uh, uh, constitution, that particular body, should also stand up and do what is needful. You see, there is nothing out of place for them to go out of our Ondo State and see where these things are working and bring it to place. You know, I tell people a lion in London is a lion in Nigeria. A lizard in London is a lizard in Nigeria. So if it has happened somewhere successfully, it can happen anywhere successfully. So it's a function of putting the right people in the right places and ensuring that they put themselves and compare notes with areas and jurisdictions that are working well, that are doing fine in that regard. IPP is not a market, it's not a, a rocket science. It is something that and, you know, you can actually check it anywhere. So, you know, they should not use this idea of government work to, I mean, government uh, bureaucratic thing around it. They should be dynamic. They should be proactive. They should, they should bring in things that will make it work. Because this will surely bring about another grid in those states. And that, that's not going to happen overnight. Then those who are going to be their subscribers will have to start paying. There must be a billing um, um, procedure. There must be, you know, all of this. And they should try to put a face, a human face to it. Because, you know, on those days, it's largely, I won't say civil service state, but largely a civil service state. Because you can't compare it to Lagos and Port and some other places. The importance of power to industrialization and productivity cannot be underestimated. This can only be achieved with constant power supply. Abia State is championing stable electricity generation and supply with the engagement of private sectors. And Aba is said to have been set up for a 24-hour electricity supply. With Ondo State enabled to govern the operations in it, could replicating a similar feat in industrial cities be feasible? We must shift from the philosophy of um, incremental 
uh, energy as we used to have it uh, in, in the past to one that is more aggressive and um, geometric in nature and we can get all of this done we can get all of this done for instance today in view of what has happened in terms of our law there is no reason why the current national grid does not transform into a tertiary grid and regions for example the southwest we can have in the southwest Undo state or shun state and the kitty state forming a tri-state for the production of electricity gas generation and transmission of electricity within their corridor. And any excess from that energy will then be exported to the tertiary grid. On those states, is, gener is going to generate uh, 4.5 megawatts at Alagbaka here. 4.5 megawatts is on now. The turbines are already in place. And uh, there are supposed to be three turbines, there are two already there. And we're working on the third one to come. At the end of the day, we generate our own power within a lot of here. As I speak to you, there is another power plant that is supposed to come. It's near the post office there. It's also about that range of power. As I speak to you, another power plant is coming up in Okitipupa area. So, we are going to have clusters of uh, power company that are coming up. Incidentally, the uh, bureau, the Ondo Electricity Regulatory Bureau, is here to issue licenses to potential investors. And that is one of the things we are doing at the moment, that we are calling on investors to come around and come and uh, invest in power supply and what the state will do is to give an enabling environment for them to be able to operate in our premises. And once this begins to happen, it, there are a lot of uh, mini grids, solar mini grids that are ongoing at the moment as I speak to you in Nondo State. Very soon, when Mr. Governor begins to commission here and there, you will understand what we are talking about. How soon will the people of Nondo State begin to see the impact of this new power sector reform? For instance, the one in Alagbaka here now is CNG. That is gas. We are going to use gas. It is easier to operate. Easier. You know, the technology we have in Nigeria is not, um, is not been too... Uh, our, people, our engineers have not been too familiar with uh, hydro. Though hydro is good, and we are going to engage people, experts in that field, to come and utilize that opportunity in that place. But nonetheless, we want to delve into that, um, that uh, sector very quickly that will be able to generate power, at least within a, a, a space of one year, we should, be, we should have improved the power supply of on those states. With the regulatory oversight now in the hands of a state, Ondo State is being positioned to usher in a new era of electricity governance, able to enhance oversight of distribution companies, grid expansion, prompt resolution of consumers' complaints, and the gradual elimination of estimated billings. State appears to be in a good stage to turn around the power sector experience within its borders now that enabling laws are in place to regulate the sector. Expectations of a public are high that the state will soon leap into a future where electricity is consistently available to all. Here is where we we'll bid you goodbye on this edition. The tracker returns next week. My name is Joy Pipes. <laughs>